Good evening. Merry Christmas. Welcome to all of you as we celebrate the joyous event of our Savior's birth. We welcome you who are here in person and those who will be worshiping with us online as well. You are all together in the Holy Spirit and we worship as one wherever we are. I wanted to uh, try to explain a little bit of the details of how things will be happening tonight because it's going to be a little different. Uh, this is our first and I pray our last COVID Christmas uh, we will celebrate, but uh, things will be done a little bit differently. So um, as you go out to your right on the table there, there's a, an offering plate if you'd like to leave your offering there and also a, um, a place to put your communion cards. So. Just leave them as you leave the church this evening. Um, communion this evening will be pilgrim style, so we will do one side of the church at a time. One family will be ushered up, and uh, we will um, drop the wafer into your hand, and then you will take your cup of wine yourself. And um, when you're finished, there's a basket on either side to leave the little cups in that the wine are in. and. Uh, we will wear our masks and our gloves for that. So we're doing that a little bit differently this evening. Bear with us uh, as we figure it all out. Um, when it comes time for the candle lighting, we'll be having ushers on two in the side and two on each side aisle, and they will light um, each family the first person's candle, and then you'll light the candles as you always do for the people next to you. So um, any other announcements? I see Mike coming up. Good evening, and Merry Christmas to all. Um, one thing that Pastor said, when we do the, the pilgrim style communion, the assistant will hand you your, okay. your, your wine, and then you can put it in the basket when you're done, you're empty. Um, I'm going to start out with 2020, what a different year, as you all know. I'll give you a short recap of our church year. January 1st through March 15th, we had our regular church service with fellowship. <clears throat> to follow. Then starting March 22nd through May 31st, we went to online church services only, which they was on the web page the pastor set up, a lot of extra work for her, and, and we thank her for that. Then on June 7th, with some restrictions, we went back to our regular church services with no fellowship through the month of September. Then fellowship after our church services resumed for the month of October. So we had um, fellowship through the, the entire month of October and then once again um, we didn't have any fellowship and that's where we're at right now. The, and you're probably wondering why I'm telling you about fellowship and everything because the last two years, this will be the third year, anything that we collected at our at our fellowship, always went to the pastor um, to help with her education or a Christmas bonus. So that's a big part of our church in helping the pastor out and, 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 and her Christmas bonus. So pastor, could you please come here? This first card that I have for you is, that's, this is from the fellowship donations and if you want to open it you sure can so the congregation knows what it is well it's a beautiful card and it's a check for five hundred dollars <laughs> thank you so yes fellowship is a big part of our of our church um, so please attend fellowship hopefully we won't have another year like this year and we can get back to the normal and uh, Look forward to seeing everybody at fellowship and church. Just don't go to fellowship. Make sure you come to church, too. <laughs> and then the second thing is from the congregation, and it's for 
not only you, but for Rick too. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And thank you for all you've done. It's, it's been a trying year for everybody. Um, as I say, we hope 2021 gets better. With, with God's help, I think it will, and, and a good leader. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. I have to mask up again. <laughs> uh, may I just say that um, this congregation is dear to my heart. I love you all. I pray for you all, and I appreciate what you do for me so much. Um, my seminary education is coming to an end. Uh, this was a very difficult semester, but I have only one more. I have the spring semester, and in May, God willing, I will uh, graduate. I will be fully, um, hopefully, going through the certification process through our uh, LCMC association, and that will mean that I am completely uh, certified or certifiable, whatever. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I will be, there is an end, uh, and, and your help, financially has meant the world to us, and I, I thank you so much. <clears throat> now, back to where I was. <clears throat> we will begin our worship by singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, Please Stand As You Are Able.
today, the eve of the 25th day of December, unknown ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century, from the time of Abraham and Sarah, our father and mother in faith. In the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. 1,100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 194th Olympiad in the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to redeem the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah and was made man. Today is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. You may be seated. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we light the final candle in our Advent wreath, the Christ candle that reminds us of the coming of our Savior in the flesh. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This new covenant was sealed at our Savior's birth. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, as Isaiah said long ago, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the Lord said, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. This one whom the prophets foretold is the Messiah, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he whom we worship. It is he whom we adore. Please join in singing, I am so glad each Christmas Eve.
This evening, we will be having what is called a service of lessons and carols. So rather than a, a sermon preached by me, what you will hear are readings from scripture and then um, the carols that we sing. And all of those proclaim the message of Jesus as our savior ever as much as a sermon does. So think of the readings and the singing as your, as your sermon this evening. We begin with the Old Testament prophecies. The Christmas story begins with God's promise to Eve in the Garden of Eden that one day her offspring will rescue the world and undo the curse of sin. God's promise was repeated over the centuries by the Old Testament prophets. More than 700 years before Jesus' birth, Micah spoke to the common people of Judah about their suffering and offered this promise of hope, that one who existed from the beginning of time would someday rule the earth in peace and justice. A reading from Micah chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small along the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are of old from ancient times. Fifty years after Micah came Isaiah, a prophet to the court at Jerusalem. In chapter 9, he provides hope for the future of Judah and the world when he prophesies a future everlasting kingdom, fulfilling God's promises to David and to Israel. He foretells the birth of the Messiah, Jesus, who will deliver the oppressed, usher in a reign of peace, and draw people of all nations to himself. A reading from Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Our carol is Angels from the Realms of Glory.
the New Testament, beginning with Matthew. The story of Jesus' birth continues into the New Testament. The Christmas story is told in both Matthew and Luke. The Gospel of Matthew was written by one of Jesus' 12 disciples to answer questions that Jewish people had about Jesus. Matthew begins his Gospel message with Jesus' genealogy, beginning with Abraham, showing how, through his earthly father Joseph, he is descended from King David. He then provides the story of Jesus' birth from Joseph's point of view. A reading from Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Our carol is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Luke was a physician and the author of both the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. Luke was a close friend and frequent traveling companion of Paul. Luke converted to Christianity after Jesus' death and res resurrection. So he relied heavily on eyewitness accounts for those events that he himself did not witness. Here Luke writes of Mary's encounter with an angel where she is told of the unbelievable events that are to come. A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Our carol is infant holy, infant lowly. In Luke chapter 2, we find one of the most well-known stories of the Bible. Luke sets the stage before writing of Jesus' birth, the king and creator of the universe, humbling himself to be born as a poor and helpless baby. A reading from Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, 
and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Our carol is Away in a Manger. Following Jesus' birth, Luke tells the story of the shepherds as the heavenly angels once again serve as God's messengers. The Holy Spirit chose common shepherds to first share the story of the birth of the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit continues to rely on us common folks to tell the story of Jesus today. A reading from Luke. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Our carol is the first Noel, verses 1 and 2.
can keep quiet after an appearance of angels. The shepherds got up and rushed to Bethlehem to verify the story that they had been told. And then they praised God and spread the story. Christmas gives us the opportunity to follow Mary's example, to think deeply about what Jesus has done for us, and then to follow the shepherd's lead in telling others the wonderful news that Jesus was born, died, and rose again for them. A reading from Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. At this time, I invite you to take a few moments of silent prayer as you prepare your hearts for Holy Communion. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Precious promise 
Son of God and Son of Man Heaven's glory in a manger Has come to us in Bethlehem Oh, Messiah Precious promise coming back again. Messiah.
And now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have fed us with Christ's precious body and blood, forgiven us through this sacrament, and given us a new beginning. Send us now into the world you love, to share Christ's sacrificial love with all we meet. Amen. At this time, I would ask the ushers to dim the lights, and you may all take out your candles. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Jesus spoke, saying, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the tenderness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. You may extinguish your candles as we sing our closing carol, Joy to the World. <laughs>